You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. On this podcast, we're going to talk about QAnon getting more and more unhinged as time goes on. Mark Robinson showing us he has absolutely no self-awareness. And conspiracy theorists claiming God can remove the vaccine from your body if you repent. We'll also be listening to voicemails. If you want to call in and leave a voicemail, the phone number is 1-800-701-8573. If you want to send an email instead, the email address is telltalemailbag at gmail.com. Got an email from Dayneb. Number one, what denomination do fundamentalist Christians fall under? Is fundamentalism its own denomination? That's a good question. I don't usually use the word fundamentalist because fundamentalist is more of a descriptor than like a a denomination. Um, Fundamentalist basically means somebody who takes the Bible literally or takes any holy book, literally. There are fundamentalists in Islam and every other religion out there. The word that I use for the people you're talking about is evangelical or dominionist. And they don't really come from a specific denomination. In fact, a lot of the time they're non-denominational. They don't have a specific denomination that they're tied to, but they all have very specific beliefs. And they're all unique, and they have them all in common. Like, for example, the belief in hellfire, the belief that you can speak in tongues, the belief that they can handle snakes and drink poison and all that stuff. It's uh, basically a branch of Pentecostalism that's gone off on its own and declared that it's non-denominational. You find representatives from this group in all different corners of Christianity. Chick tracts, for example, those are non-denominational evangelical groups that produce those. Basically, every televangelist out there is the same branch of evangelical, non-denominational, like Kenneth Copeland and Robin Bullock and all of them. They're all from the same kind of denomination, if that's what you'd call it. Number two, is Christian fundamentalism a cult? And if so, to what extent? It definitely is. The evangelical group absolutely is a cult. And I've talked about it a little bit in some videos on my main channel. If you want to get more information, you can look there. Are there any known effective ways of pulling someone out of fundamentalism? I have nothing against those that are religious, but the people who claim LGBT people are abominations, abortion is wrong no matter what, and that the world is 6,000 years old are simply irrational. I have friends that still think all these things, and I don't think I'll be able to remain friends with them if they continue to believe these things despite so much evidence against them. By the time you get into this branch of evangelicalism, or by the time you have devoted your life to believing this stuff, getting people out of it is very, very challenging, if it's even possible at all. We have to go into these situations assuming these people can be saved from this, assuming they can be reasoned with, but that's not actually, practically, always the case. For example, my mom will never leave Jehovah's Witnesses. We have to afford every cult member the right of assuming that they can be saved, assuming they can be talked off the ledge of of extremism. But that's not always practically the case. So don't keep your hopes high, but if you want to give it a shot, check out Anthony Magnabosco. He's great on street street epistemology, basically deconverting people from extremism. And I've done some videos on it too. Number five, unrelated to the previous topic, how do I get involved in the atheist activist community? I'm a college student studying aerospace engineering, so money is very tight, but I want to get involved in any way possible. I would recommend finding local atheist groups in your area that meet or that used to meet before the pandemic. Also get involved in the online community to any extent that you can. It's good to have people around you that think alike that so that you're not surrounded by extremists 24 7 try to find fellow atheists if it's at all possible even if it's online you know i've been getting um emails from youtube i think i got like eight or nine emails from youtube over the past few weeks that basically say we removed one of your videos because of a 
community guidelines violation, which would normally be a, a strike, like a channel strike. You only get two of those before they delete your fucking channel. This is on my podcast channel, the, the Fireside Chat. But they said, we understand you may not have known that it was a violation at the time, so we're just removing it. We're not giving you a strike. They've done it like eight or nine times now, all of which were on my live streams. So I liked to keep them unlisted so that people could go in and watch them again if they had a notification or something. But I have to delete these. I have to start deleting them. It's sad. I have to remove all that data, all the live chat stuff and everything it's all gone i deleted every live stream that i have ever held on the podcast channel and on my main channel just the other day um i wish i didn't have to do that but i don't want to risk getting my channel fucking deleted that would be so heartbreaking and devastating so anyways um yeah this live stream isn't going to exist for long after i finish it in fact i may delete it tonight I don't know, we'll see after I'm done. And then just upload the clips as usual. Bronze Eagle Productions, you could try to get on Nebula, though I'm not sure what the entry requirements are. Well, I'm working with Curiosity Stream. I don't know how many of you guys saw my video earlier, but yeah, I, Curiosity Stream is a sponsor now, surprisingly. I didn't expect them to work with me, but yeah, they're, they, they've been so fucking cool with me so far. If you guys want to sign up with them, it's curiositystream.com. Coupon code is Telltale, I believe. Uh, it's like $15 a year. It's ridiculously inexpensive, all things considered. I didn't even realize it was that fucking cheap. But anyways, yeah. Curiosity Stream's pretty cool. And uh, they are partnered with Nebula, so... I probably could get onto Nebula. But it's a smaller platform than YouTube. I'd rather not get kicked off YouTube. I'll just do my best to work within the confines of what YouTube wants. Hey, this is Owen. If you're comfortable, leave your first name and state at the sound of the tiny truck backing up. Hi, Owen. This is Katie of Pennsylvania. I want to get your thoughts on this. Do you think that at some point in our distant, distant future, people are going to look back at us and think that we either worshipped Trump or some guy named Brandon? Because I think that's quite possible. Thank you. Love your shows. Bye. That's an interesting question. I don't think people are going to look back at this time period in our distant future and think that because we are so incredibly good at cataloging and recording every little event that takes place in modern society. Everything. Things were different, like, even as recently as 100 years ago, or even 50 years ago, because we didn't have the internet. But now we have this thing that connects everybody. And we have this system, Wikipedia, where anybody can type anything out that they want and record it for posterity. There are people who go through Wikipedia making sure that there are links and references and making sure that it's all accurate and things like that. It's not a perfect system, but any little event that takes place is probably recorded in Wikipedia. Except for me, like I'm not on Wikipedia. I would love to have a Wikipedia page but I have no idea how to go about doing that. So if anybody on here is a Wikipedia author, then hit me up and we can work together to add a Wikipedia page. Anyways, the point is um, things are different now than they were even 25 years ago. Um, I don't think anyone's going to have to look back at any time in the past 25 years and wonder exactly what happened because it's recorded from so many different perspectives, by so many different people, it's completely different than it used to be. Zimron from Pennsylvania. My question for you is, how do you deal with people in your life who sometimes even openly state or imply that you're going to hell because you're an atheist? Especially if they're people close to you, not family, but friends, but like everywhere. How do you cope with being in the same room with these people? I don't think that I've dealt with that specifically because I wasn't ever really around evangelicals when I was growing up, which is which are the type of people who would believe that kind of thing. But I was around a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses, and their belief is that I am evil. Even when I wasn't an apostate, as they call it, even when I was just disfellowshipped or not even on good terms with the religion, if you will, 
they still believed that I was going to die and that was going to be the end of it. I wasn't going to have a shot in life. I had lost my opportunity at everlasting life in their eyes. So the way I'm viewing your question is, how do I deal with people who believe that I'm at my core evil or I've lost my chance at an everlasting life or whatever else? And the answer is, I just don't be around those people personally. I'm kind of in a privileged position to not have to be around people like that if I don't want to, but sometimes you just have to find a way to separate yourself from it. If you find yourself in that situation where you're, you know, like your your parents believe that about you and you have to deal with them on a daily basis, I would try setting up some boundaries. Tell them you don't want to listen to it, you don't want to deal with it when they say things like this and you won't accept it. You're just going to walk away when they start saying things like that. That doesn't change the fact that they believe it, and you know they believe it, um, and that's going to weigh on you heavily. So just try to build a wall as best you can to protect your own mental health. That would be my advice. Hi, my name's Sarah from Illinois. Um, my father received a letter, a handwritten letter from me at his address, from a Jehovah's Witness in my town that I've never heard of. I'm not sure how that information would be available, and I was just wondering if you had any ideas. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate the call. Uh, I don't know how they do it now, but I can tell you how they used to do it back in the day. Even when I was younger, they still did phone witnessing and letter writing campaigns and stuff, like before the pandemic and all that. And what they used to do was... They would get a phone book and they would flip it open to a specific page and they'd go down the list and they'd pick out a name and they would write a letter because your phone number and your address are listed right there in that book. It's actually pretty disturbing how public that kind of information is. You can go to certain websites and pay services to try to scrub your name from the internet to the best of your ability if that's what you want to do. But your name and addresses, even previous addresses, previous phone numbers and relatives, all that shit is readily available on the internet. It is so easy to find that stuff. It is disturbingly easy. So that's basically how Jehovah's Witnesses do it. They just get on the internet and find somebody's name that they want to write letters to, or they open a phone book and they just flip to a random page and they write the letter and check them off a list. That's it. It's, it shouldn't be that easy, but it is. Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster is the title. This is from Bob. I'm a proud member of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, but my friends call it a cult. I'd like to hear your take on it. The worst thing I can think of is you can pay some money to become an ordained minister and perform ceremonies like marriages and exorcisms, but it's optional, and I think it's just to keep the website alive. Yeah, the uh, Flying Spaghetti Monster Church, quote-unquote, isn't even really a church. It was made up as like a, a counter to religious extremism where they're trying to permeate every facet of society and politics with religion. And the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster was made up to, A, show how absolutely ridiculous it is, religion, generally speaking, and B, to try to force their way into the school system and things like that. The schools obviously aren't going to accept it if the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster wants to make everybody pray to you know, the noodly god or whatever. That's absolutely outrageous. It's not going to happen. But if they're going to reject the flying spaghetti monster, they have to reject Christianity and Islam. They have to treat all religions equally. So I, I do see value in the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster for that reason, and in the Satanic Temple and the Church of Satan and all of the other Satanic religions. I see value in them for that reason, to keep a check on religious privilege. As for your question about whether or not it's a cult, no, it's not. It's just a method of countering religious extremism and religious takeover of our institutions. If somebody called it a cult, then it's probably because they don't like the fact that they can't take over the school system like they want to, as a result of the work the Flying Spaghetti Monster Church has been doing. This is from Derek. Hey, Telltale, I'm an atheist dating a Catholic girl, but she never goes to church, and 
To her, all there is is just baptism at birth, belief in God, and confessing to a priest when you sin. I've been dating her for three and a half years now, but we've been dating so long, marriage has become a subject in her conversations. Her family wants me to convert, and she doesn't see it as a big deal. I'm not sure what to do, and I know this is a hard situation. Just wanted to see if you'd had any insight on the matter. Sorry if this has been a long one. The thing about Catholicism is they do everything they possibly can to push it on the new generation. Typically, when you are involved with a Catholic person, uh, romantically involved, the church wants to push their way in there too. They want you to sign a contract that you will raise your kid Catholic and go to pre-marriage counseling, basically, to prepare you for what will be expected of you in this Catholic marriage and all kinds of other stuff. It's not good. I would be extremely wary. I know that your girlfriend isn't really super religious, and, and this contract you have to sign when you get married that any kids you have are going to have to be raised Catholic, that's not really legally binding, probably, but still, they do their absolute best to force it down your throat. Now, are your in-laws Catholic or your future in-laws? Are they going to be Catholic? Because you signed this contract, and they're going to hold that over your head until the day you die. They're going to do everything they can to force this religion down your kids' throats. You have to draw a boundary at some point. You have to make sure everybody involved understands you don't want this for your kid. If the relationship is worth more to you than that contract, like if you're willing to just sign the contract just to be in the relationship anyways, so be it. Um, just understand what you're signing up for when you get involved in this. Being with a Catholic person is no small thing. Catholicism tries to cram it down your throat to the best of their ability, so be careful, and good luck. Birdie Gamer. Hey Owen, I have a question regarding Bullock's breakdown a week or two ago. Does that mean he's actually getting flack for his false prophecies? Um, good question. Let me give you a little bit of context for this real quick. This is the clip that Birdie Gamer was talking about. Give this a listen real quick. Apologize. Go ahead and apologize. Well, no! How about that? Just so you can hear me again. No! Because you are wrong. You keep your doctrines. You keep your doctrines. But I'll tell you what. You are going to answer for trying to regulate the Lord's prophets. You, with your big educations, you're going to answer for trying to regulate a prophet of the Lord and telling a prophet of the Lord that what God said is not true, but what you said is true. You're in trouble. You're in trouble now. Okay, so that's the context for it. Now, to read the question again, I have a question regarding Bullock's breakdown a week or two ago. Does that mean he's actually getting flack for his false prophecies? I don't think so. The way that his life operates and the way his church operates, he's basically completely separate from criticism. Like, he doesn't expose himself to criticism. Similar to Jehovah's Witnesses, they are always surrounded by other Jehovah's Witnesses. They're always around people who believe similarly to them. As a result he probably is not getting much criticism for prophesying that Donald Trump would be the president again in 2020, and then that prophecy failing. My guess is that the guy is probably maybe a little bit embarrassed by it, or he's just preempting it, uh, preempting those arguments, or he knows that people are making those arguments against him, and even though he, maybe he hasn't even seen them. And he's just putting it out there, trying to show off his persecution complex and get his congregation involved and feel that they're being persecuted. That's a pretty common tactic. It builds group loyalty and camaraderie and makes them more enthusiastic and, and makes them feel like they're more brotherly or more close, if you will. It's something Jehovah's Witnesses do all the time. Um, I really doubt that he's actually getting quote-unquote persecuted like he's describing here. 
but he wants people to think that he is. Thoughts on this? My mom has become Q. She's now a Christian. Do you think people can convince themselves that they're religious simply via believing conspiracies often touted by religious leaders? Definitely. Uh, Religion is uh, almost like a fundamental piece of the QAnon belief system in some ways. QAnon has this belief that Hillary Clinton is like a satanic high priestess in the satanic church or whatever and that she needs these blood sacrifices for satanic rituals blah 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 it's like a fundamental piece of religion so it wouldn't surprise me if she started buying into the q stuff it wouldn't surprise me if she became religious it would actually surprise me if she wasn't religious when she's also q and but that's interesting i hope things turn out okay good luck dealing with that Lucille Knight, six weeks ago, you said in a podcast that the Trinity is not mentioned in the Bible. That is exactly what I needed to hear before finally letting go of my faith. After 24 years in a Nazarene church, wow, I'm finally free. Thank you for everything you do. Uh, That's fantastic. I'm so glad to hear that. I know the Church of the Nazarene. Is that the one you're talking about? Um, There are a couple different versions of the Church of the Nazarene. There's the Nazarene Church, and then the Church of the Nazarene. One is way more extreme than the other. Uh, I think one of them actually buys into a lot of the apocryphal texts about Jesus going to hell and stealing the keys from the devil and everything else. Uh, That's fascinating. I'm so glad to hear that you got out of that, though. Nacho Tor, back when I was in Catholic school, we were straight up told the Trinity wasn't in the Bible, but that we should still believe it anyway. Yeah, the Trinity is not biblical. Not only is it not in the Bible, but they went back and retroactively changed words to make it seem like it was supported by the Bible, even though it wasn't, fascinatingly. When I left Jehovah's Witnesses originally... I decided to reevaluate everything about my life from the ground up. Everything I learned, I learned in the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses from that lens. So I decided to reevaluate it all. One of the things that I reevaluated was the Trinity, because Jehovah's Witnesses don't accept the Trinity. And I wondered if that was bullshit. Like, is, is the Trinity actually real? And Jehovah's Witnesses were full of shit? No. Turns out, Jehovah's Witnesses were correct. The Trinity is false. That's one of those things that if you research it enough, you will find that they're totally right about that. And they use that fact, that they're correct about it, to add credibility to their own belief system, to leverage themselves into a position where they're more believable about their other claims. That's really dirty and underhanded, how they do that stuff, but they can still be correct about that one issue. The Trinity is fake and added later, hundreds of years later, by monks. When we come back, we're going to talk about QAnon getting more and more unhinged as time goes on. Give us 30 seconds and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. The first article I wanted to take a look at is titled QAnon's Queen of Canada Calls for Followers to Kill People Vaccinating Children. This is some serious shit. This is written on Vice.com, but they're not the only ones that are covering this story. And I wanted to... Whoa, hello, kitty. I wanted to get into a couple of other examples of them going completely off the rails, like into disturbing territory. Um, And we will get into that in a couple of minutes. We'll get into some video clips. But for the moment, while the cat sniffs my microphone and rubs up against it, let's give this a read and see what this Vice article had to say. Kitty, you're going to have to sit down. Or get down, one or the other. Are you going to get down? You going to get down or are you going to sit? Kitty, you got to get down or sit. You can't stand on the arm of my chair. Go on. 
Okay. This is written by Mac Lemero. Earlier this week, the so-called QAnon Queen of Canada opened up duck hunting season in the Great White North. Now, to be clear, we aren't talking about hunters and hip waiters going after our fine-feathered friends with a loyal hound by their side. These duck hunters are soldiers of Roman Dedulo, a Canadian woman who's convinced thousands of QAnon adherents that she's the secret ruler of Canada targeting healthcare workers administering COVID-19 vaccines to children, politicians, journalists, and others who make up the cabal at the heart of the QAnon conspiracy. This is real shit. I actually tried to find this person, Roman Dudulo. The most common kind of QAnon social media network or the the most common way they communicate with each other is Telegram. That's one of the biggest ways. But... I couldn't find her on Telegram. Apparently, she has a Telegram account of like 70,000 people, or she did. I don't know if she was removed by Telegram for the for these comments or, or what. I have no idea. I couldn't find her account anywhere, and I looked pretty fucking hard. In addition to that, it's also really, really difficult to get kicked off of Telegram. You have to do so fucking much. Like, they won't kick you off of Telegram for shit. But I am on Telegram following some of my favorite, you know, Q conspiracy theorists. Like, for example, the praying medic. He has like 150,000 followers or 200,000 or something on Telegram, of all things. Praying medic is massively famous. That's no small number, especially for like a social media network that is not really that used by most people. Like, a lot of people don't even know what Telegram is. So the fact that he has 200,000 on there, that's concerning. This is real shit. QAnon is real shit. Let's keep reading. In a post on Sunday to her over 70,000 followers on Telegram, Didulo issued an order to the soldiers of her Kingdom of Canada's military. She demanded the mass arrests of those they consider opposition and wanted her soldiers to take control of newspapers and seize the border. Yeah, why the hell is... She, a QAnon member, she lives in Canada. QAnon heavily focuses around Donald Trump as the leader. Why would anybody outside of the U.S. even give a shit about any of this? This is, like, so mind-blowing to me. But they believe it's a worldwide issue. They believe that, you know, there are these rings that operate in all different countries, and Donald Trump is going to take the presidency back in the United States and he's going to, you know, execute justice swiftly. Just real weird shit. Anyway, let's keep reading. Shoot to kill anyone who tries to inject children under the age of 19 years old with coronavirus 19 vaccines slash bioweapons or any other vaccines, she wrote. This order is effective immediately. A follow-up post on Tuesday changed the wording from shoot to kill to arrest. Yeah, this is, um, this is real shit. She had 70,000 followers on telegram again maybe her telegram is under a name that i didn't know but i searched for like all variations of her name and could not find her on telegram please use airports hospitals schools stadiums and other public venues to hold and detain all traitors the post said they will stay there until military tribunal is held for each one of them until the day they're executed via firing squad or hanging didulo doesn't have a passive audience over the summer, the British Columbian woman mobilized her audience into sending out thousands of cease and desist letters across North America. Some have recently popped up in Europe, demanding businesses, governments, and police forces stop all activities related to combating the pandemic. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Didulo implies that her duck hunters are secretive military veterans she's bringing in from the U.S., but on Telegram, a chat app known for its lax rules, over 6,000 of her online supporters have signed up to be part of Canada Military 2.0, a separate but inactive Telegram page where followers pledge to be part of Didulo's fighting force. I've offered my life for humanity and joined our Canadian duck hunters, one of her followers wrote. If you think this is a new revelation, this new wave of violence that they're using or this violent rhetoric they're using, you'd be incorrect. This has been going on for a little while, um, at least since the beginning of 2021, and it's been progressively getting worse and worse as time goes on. I wanted to look at a couple of pastors who are full-blown QAnon. Give this a listen. This is from late November 2021, fairly recent. What you have to do is end this madness because their madness will never end if we don't stand up to it. 
10 years from now, they, they will still be imposing vaccines on people in order for you to breathe. Oh, you want, you want to breathe? Oh, you're going to have to have another booster. I mean, they're, they're going to continue to restrict the rights of people until there is nothing left. Yes. And so you have to stop them and you have to be prepared for the unthinkable to be implemented to stop them. We're, we're going into world war and it's, it's a world war against tyrants. And the people are going to have to fight this war on their own against the tyrants. The tyrants are worldwide in the government. The governments of the world. The tyrants are against the people. The ruling class is against the people of the world. And it's going to have to be a global revolution to crush them. Not just slow them down or roll back their plans, but utterly to crush them so that they never get up and try this again. This is Rick Wiles, Pastor Rick Wiles from True News. He's got a pretty decently sized audience, a big audience. It's a full-blown news network. Now, it's not as popular as, say, CNN or whatever. Um, it's heavily right-wing. And like I said, he's, he's QAnon, so this one isn't that old. This is from November. We're going to go back a little bit further and see some older clips. He's been saying something similar for a while. This is not new. Well, it's reasonably new, I guess. You could say it's new if you mean in the past year it's been ramping up heavily. Let's finish this clip out. Let's see what else he had to say. That would be 100 years until somebody even has a stupid thought in their head again that they're going to take away the rights and freedoms of people. It has to be so devastating that it goes down in the history books that the people rose up and utterly crushed them and ended the tyranny. I mean, that's their pretext for tyranny, ending tyranny. Isn't that fascinating? It's fucking concerning. This clip, uh, I'm not actually sure how old this one is. This clip may have actually been from 2020, but give this one a listen, see what he says. Come on, come on left. We're gonna meet you in the streets this time. We're going to defend this state of Florida. We're not going to put up with this stuff anymore. The left, you better pack up and flee. You better, if you're part of this communist revolution, lefties, you better get out of the country. Yeah, I, I'm not a communist by any stretch of the imagination. I am not a communist. I do not believe in communism. But in his eyes, I am. So where's the line? Where does Pastor Rick Wiles draw the line? Who's he talking to here exactly? I'm not communist, but I guarantee you he's talking about me. You better, if you're part of this communist revolution, lefties, you better get out of the country. If, if we find out you're a part of the communist revolution, we're coming after you. All right. I don't care. FBI, put my name down on a list. Go ahead and do it. Do it. I don't care. That's fucking concerning right there. And this clip is about a year old, I would say. This has been ramping up for a while. I'm not actually sure when this clip is from either. And in fact, this one is a little bit older. This clip's a little bit older, maybe a year and a half old, because I remember he didn't have this beard until fairly recently. He only grew this beard in the past like year or so. So I, I'm gonna guess he's about 18 months old. Give this one a listen. If they take him out. Uh, talking about Donald Trump here. If they take him out, there's going to be violence in America. That's all there is to it. And when we say take him out, however he leaves, there's going to be violence in America. Hey, how about that? He was correct. He was correct. There was. There was violence on January 6th when Donald Trump was leaving the White House. Uh, in, as a matter of fact, inspired by Donald Trump himself. Uh, this guy seems to celebrate it. In a few minutes, I don't remember if I cut this part out or not because for time constraints, but I'll tell you. He says... This isn't something that I wish for. I don't want this violence, but it's inevitable. It's going to happen because the commies, blah, 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 just into conspiracy land all of a sudden. So he says, I don't want it, but then continues on to justify it to himself. You know, it's okay in this situation. I, I do want it in this situation because the commies are taking over and they're doing this thing and that thing and, and ruining our country, blah, blah, blah. There are people in this country, veterans... There are cowboys, 
Look at this proud look on his face while he talks about cowboys. This clip cracks me up every fucking time. That is the tagline of my show, hilarious and sad. Mountain men, I mean guys that know how to fight, okay? And they're gonna make a decision that the people that did this to Donald Trump are not gonna get away from it, with it. And they're gonna hunt him down. The Trump supporters are going to hunt them down. I don't know when this clip was exactly, if it was before the election took place or after. I believe it was before the election even happened, like before November 3rd or 4th or whenever it was. The reason I think that is because he doesn't have his beard, and he's been growing that beard for a while. If I really wanted to, I could go back and find out exactly when this clip was, but he was basically preparing for the eventuality that Donald Trump is going to lose the election before the election even took place, and priming his audience to do what he believes they need to do when that happens. That's fucking concerning. The Trump supporters are going to hunt them down. Yeah. It's the kind of shit we're dealing with. This clip is recent, late November 2021, and you know what? This one is from a lieutenant governor of North Carolina. I think it's North Carolina. Dude's name is Mark Robinson. Give this one a listen. It's a little hard to hear, but I'll tell you what he says. It's short. We're facing the federal right. government and let's face it. It's tyrannical. We're facing the federal government and let's face it, it's tyrannical. Oh yeah. It is tyrannical. Guys, this is the type of government the Second Amendment was made for. It's tyrannical. Guys, this is the type of government the Second Amendment was made for. This is a lieutenant governor. This is the second in command in all of North Carolina, the entire state. That's some real shit. Things are starting to ramp up now. You thought things were ramping up around January 6th? They're ramping up now. Listen to this clip. This is from late October 2021. This is actor Jim Caviezel. He was from the movie Passion of the Christ. He played Jesus in that directed by Mel Gibson. He's giving a speech at a QAnon conference. Dude is full-blown QAnon, by the way. And as it turns out, this speech sounds a little familiar. He is word for word directly quoting the movie Braveheart by Mel Gibson. Check this one out. Fight and you may die. Run and you live for at least a while. And dying in your beds many years from now, would you have been willing to trade all the years from this day to that for one chance? Just one chance to come back here and tell our enemies that you can take our lives, that you can never take our freedom. Every man dies. He said that without cracking a smile. That is impressive. Um, I can't imagine anybody saying that unironically, but it seems like he achieved the impossible. That kind of speech was a motivator in the movie Braveheart, for people to get violent. That's what it was about. Dude was trying to get people revved up into a blood frenzy. What do you think Jim Caviezel's doing with that speech? Let's keep listening. You can never take our freedom. Every man dies. Yeah. Not every man truly lives. You, 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 we must fight for that authentic freedom and live, my friends. By God, we must live. And with the Holy Spirit as your shield and Christ as your sword, May you join St. Michael and all the angels in defending God and sending Lucifer and his henchmen straight right back to hell where they belong. These people are unhinged, guys. These people are unhinged from reality at this point. The news is writing about this person, Didulo. That's only surprising because, for one thing, they try to speak in veiled messages. Sorry, bump my mic. They try to speak in veiled messages. They don't want to just come out and say it because if they come out and say it openly, then they can be charged for this under certain laws, you know, uh, incitement of violence laws and stuff like that. Some of this stuff isn't protected under the First Amendment, and Canada doesn't even have a First Amendment. Like, they, they have a, a totally separate bill of rights from the u.s they have different freedom of speech laws and rules and stuff than us so the the really surprising part is that she decided to make herself vulnerable to possible prosecution by saying something like this openly and outright and the second surprising thing about this is the fact that she had such a large following when she said this it's not really surprising it's more concerning 
we should be a little bit worried at this point. 70,000 Telegram followers on an obscure social media network, and on top of that, only a few thousand who are really genuinely active and believe themselves to be literal soldiers. The QAnon movement call themselves digital soldiers and, you know, treat it like they're really in a military as digital soldiers. And this person seems to be building an army of actual soldiers, not just digital ones, but actual ones and made the call to mobilize those supposed actual soldiers against frontline workers, against parents and children, and whoever. Whoever it takes to turn the world into what they want it to look like. That's fucking scary. When we come back, we're going to talk about Pastor and Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson showing us he has absolutely no self-awareness. Give us 30 seconds, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Next story I wanted to talk about is about a guy named Mark Robinson. Now, I've talked about him a few times before. In fact, I've critiqued this exact video, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a refresher on who he is because it's been a couple of weeks or maybe even a month since I've talked about him. I don't know how long now. This is the Lieutenant Governor. Hey, kitty, what are you doing? Why are you over here? Go on. I got things going on right now. I know you want pets, but... Good kitty. Okay, go on. This is Mark Robinson. He is the lieutenant governor of North Carolina, I believe. It's North Carolina. Yeah, he's the lieutenant governor of North Carolina. He's a big fucking deal. He's not a nobody. When he speaks, people listen. He is a major politician, second most powerful person in the entire state of North Carolina. So we should be taking this shit seriously. Let's listen to this clip. It's a shortened version from the one that I've discussed before because I want to look at one of the new speeches he gave just the other day. Listen to this clip. This is from early October 2021. You have to send your children here to school. Then when they get there, what do they teach them? Teach them a bunch of stuff about how to hate America. Teach them a bunch of stuff about why they're racist. Teach them a bunch of stuff about transgenderism and homosexuality. I gotta say, I don't remember learning any of that shit in school. When would they, quote-unquote, teach any of this stuff? Is he just saying that, like, these kids have friends that are gay or whatever? Why is that a problem? I don't understand. I'm saying this now, and I've been saying it, and I don't care who likes it. Those issues have no place in a school. There's no reason anybody anywhere in America should be telling any child about transgenderism, homosexuality, any of that filth. And yes, I called it filth. And if you don't like it that I called it filth, come see me and I'll explain it to you. Yeah, I don't I don't need you to explain it to me. I, I know exactly why far right conservative wing nuts have a tendency to hate people and divide and find reasons to complain about things. It really didn't surprise me to hear him saying things like this just based on who he is and other things that he said in the past, but it disappoints the hell out of me to hear things like this. I I can't fucking stand it. You know, these things are like facts of society. You know, there are gay people in society. There are trans people in society. That's just what it is. Do you just not want people to talk about this? Do you not want anybody in society who's gay to even exist? Do you want to deport them or something? I mean, I I say that in jest, but in reality, that probably is pretty on par with what this guy believes and how he feels. I just want to set the tone because this is the kind of person we're dealing with right now. I want, I want you guys to understand exactly the type of person we're dealing with as we walk into the rest of this. Listen to this next clip. This one came out late November 2021, so pretty recent. We're facing a federal right. government that let's face it, it's tyrannical. Federal government is tyrannical is what he says here. Oh, yeah. It is tyrannical. Guys, 
This is the type of government the Second Amendment was made for. This is the type of government the Second Amendment was made for. If that's not a call to action, I don't know what is. Seriously. I don't know what is. How much further does he have to go before he crosses the line into this is against the law to say? You can't yell fire in a crowded theater because it could lead to imminent health risks. It could hurt people, like immediately hurt people. That basically seems like what he's doing here. Seems exactly like what he's doing here. He's getting people whipped up into a blood frenzy and more willing to quote unquote use their second amendment rights is this not concerning to anybody else it it sounds kind of familiar doesn't it i mean we've heard other people say shit like this recently this is from early august 2021 this is marjorie taylor green and one more thing on that you lucky people here in alabama might get a knock on your door because i hear alabama might be one of the most unvaccinated states in the nation Well, Joe Biden wants to come talk to you guys. For context, at this time, Joe Biden said that he was thinking about finding a way to send people around door to door, basically with vaccines. And if you wanted one, you could get vaccinated right then and there at the door. Just super simple. It makes it easier and more convenient for people to get vaccinated who may not otherwise have the time, you know, because they have to work full time or, or even work two jobs or three jobs. People are busy especially in this economy, this complete garbage. Nobody has any time or money. So Joe Biden had talked about making things a little bit easier to encourage vaccination by sending people out to you. If you wanted to get vaccinated, you could optionally have them come inside and give you the shot and then go on. Sounds like an awesome fucking idea to me. Let's see what Marjorie Taylor Greene thinks of it. He's going to be sending one of his police state friends uh, to your front door to knock on the door, take down your name, your address, your family members' names, your phone numbers, your cell phone numbers, probably ask for your social security number. Okay, first of all, it wouldn't be police state friends because these are just work, you know, they're health workers. They're not police officers. And second, the federal government has all that information. In fact, they're the ones that assigned the fucking social security number to you in the first place. So she's just fear mongering here straight up. Whether you've taken the vaccine or not. Yeah. Well, what they don't know is in the South, we all love our Second Amendment rights. Is this not crossing the line into like illegal speech yet? When does it cross the line into against the law? This is barely a dog whistle. This isn't even really a dog whistle. Why hide behind the Second Amendment right thing? We're going to exercise our Second Amendment right. Just come out and say what you mean. How are they getting away with this anyways? It blows my fucking mind. How have they not been charged with a crime for inciting violence with this type of rhetoric. These are fucking politicians, people. These are politicians, elected representatives. These people are the government, and they're trying to destroy it from the inside. Anyways, that was Marjorie Taylor Greene's bit on it. Um, That brings us cleanly to the heart of the video. This is the clip I wanted to talk about originally. This is from late November 2021. I have a couple clips from this speech that Mark Robinson gave, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson. So let's give this a listen and see what he had to say for himself. Gay couple, straight couple, dark room, dark room, nine months later, gay couple, two people, nine months later, heterosexual, three people. These people are superior because they can do something these people can't do. Okay, fascinating. Um, Dark room? Why does the room have to be dark? I know I'm just nitpicking here, but uh, basically the crux of his argument is that gay people can't produce children, and that makes straight couples superior. I guess you'd call this straight supremacy? This is the lgbt version of white supremacy it's basically the exact same thing uh straight people are superior to gay people and they should be treated as such alex baronowski by his logic menopausal women who cannot make babies any longer shouldn't be married so in that respect i guess that means that people who are in relationships that are older than say 70 years old or even 50 years old in some cases People who are in relationships who are older than 50 are abominations and shouldn't be married 
and are inferior to people who are in relationships and under 50 years old. The thing about this ideology that he has is that it's nonsensical. It's not based on principle. It's based on hate. And as a result, it's super easy to poke holes in it. And we have to continue to poke those holes. We have to continue to point out those inconsistencies. It's important that we point those inconsistencies out. This is so fucking concerning, this rhetoric. Seriously. When you go down this rabbit hole, when you go down this route of using language like this, it leads to an ugly place. We can look at history as evidence of what happens when supremacists get involved in government. It is not hard to find. We have lots of examples of it. Real horrific stuff. Dude fancies himself a comedian. I don't find this fucking funny. Let's keep listening. Hey, dude! Because that's the way God created it to be! And I'm tired of this society trying to tell me it's not so. Society has completely purged God from the building and from the equation. Well, yeah, I would hope. Getting God out of politics and out of the classrooms and things like that, yeah. That's how it should be. There shouldn't be Jesus all up in there. Shouldn't have anything to do with it. You want to be religious? Go to church. I mean, this guy is a pastor of his church, I believe. That's perfectly fine. I have no fucking problem with that. But when you try to seamlessly integrate it into politics, when you try to force it on other people, when you try to force people to conform to your religious beliefs, then I have a problem with it. And as a matter of fact, that is exactly what this guy is doing. That's what he's been doing the whole fucking time. We have laws to prevent this kind of thing, like the Establishment Clause in the Constitution and the rules set up by the separation of church and state by Thomas Jefferson in communication with Danbury Church, wrote a bunch of letters back and forth between them that describe exactly what the Founding Fathers wanted things to look like regarding separation of church and state. We have all of that stuff outlined perfectly clearly. I have to wonder what society would look like right now if Thomas Jefferson hadn't had those conversations with Danbury Church if the Establishment Clause wasn't in the Constitution to prevent politics and religion from mixing, what would it look like right now? It's already mixing heavily. What if the Johnson Amendment wasn't in the tax code? What would our political landscape look like right now? These people are Christian supremacists, Christian nationalists. People say, oh, Lance, I don't know, you sound like a Christian nationalist. Yes, I am a Christian nationalist. They believe that this country should be made up of Christians and Christians only. The government should be made up of Christians and Christians only. That's the caliber of person that we're dealing with here. And because of it, we're headed down into a rabbit hole that's gonna lead us to something we can't even imagine. That's right. What does that even mean? And because of it, we're being led into a rabbit hole that we can't even imagine? What's going to happen? This is like fear-mongering to the highest degree. What is the worst that could possibly happen if we had gay marriage in the country? Or if gay people were just accepted as equal members of society? What's the worst that could happen? Mark Robinson, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson. What's the worst that could happen? God destroyed a society because of its immorality. And let's get this straight. In this country, we don't have a homosexual issue. That's just a tool of the devil to continue to divide us and lead us into immorality. Oh, that's the worst that could happen. I see. Sodom and Gomorrah. The old reference to Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, I can see he hasn't read his Bible because that's not why Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed because of their ill treatment of the poor. It had nothing to do with their LGBT lifestyle or whatever else, quote unquote. Nothing to do with it. But, you know, that, that's the thing about the Bible. If I've said this once, I've said it a hundred times. It's a book written over the span of thousands of years by dozens of authors, and they all had contradicting viewpoints. If you want to justify a position that you already hold, you can. You want to hate people in the LGBT community? Easy. We got like six verses for it, but only six. If you want to love people in the LGBT community, that's easy too. 
We've got endless verses about loving your neighbor, not judging lest ye be judged, and all of that other shit. The Bible is only a pretext to reaffirm your already existing moral beliefs. That's what the Bible really is. It does not make any moral declarations that it doesn't reverse a chapter later. So we know exactly where Mark Robinson falls on this spectrum. And it is not because the Bible says so, because the Bible directly contradicts his beliefs about how you're supposed to treat people. His position is not biblically based. His position was probably programmed into him by his parents. Let's listen to the next clip. This one came out late November 2021. Obviously, it's from the same talk that we were just watching. It's just a different section of the talk. So let's give this one a listen and see what he says. But I can't stand to turn that TV on and I don't want, want my grandkids watching that television because I don't want to have to explain to my grandkids why two men are kissing. Okay, I don't know what show he's watching that that even has that but if there's like uh you know if there's like a makeout scene or something that would probably not make it on tv anyways not just between guys but between a married couple they wouldn't have like serious makeout sessions between two people on the tv or maybe they would but it would be on like a later night show or something TV is really, really strict about what you can put on there. So I'm not sure what he's afraid of his kids seeing on the TV, but there are like serious ratings boards that like heavily restrict that kind of thing in the first place. What is he so afraid of? Like, why does this upset him so much anyways? You're okay with your kids seeing a guy and a girl kissing. You're okay with your kids seeing a guy and a girl hold hands or hug or whatever. Why is it any different? What's different about it? Tell me what's different about this. I, I mean, really explain it to me. Go into detail. What is different about these, these two scenarios here? I don't want to have to explain to my grandkids why two men are kissing. And I don't care what anybody thinks that. Get mad at me if you want to. I'm not mad at you. I'm just fucking confused. Why do you give a shit? I mean, you're... A Republican, right? I mean, Mark Robinson is a Republican, and a large part of the Republican identity is libertarianism, or they've tried to make it that anyways, even though they aren't really libertarians. The idea behind libertarianism is having a small state. Republicans like to pretend that they have a libertarian streak in them usually. Having that libertarian streak, Mark Robinson, why do you give a shit what other people are doing in their own lives between two consenting adults. Who fucking cares? Why is this such a bugbear for you? Ain't no child got no business seeing no two men kiss. If they did, God would have made it that way. He didn't. Uh, as a matter of fact, good sir, he did. God created everything, right? Didn't God create everything? Well, he must have created the gay couples too. Either that or God fucked up somewhere along the way. So which is it? Is God imperfect and fuck things up? Or did he create gay couples? Guess what? Animals engage in long-term monogamous homosexual relationships too, not just humans. From my understanding, I think it's about 10% of the ram population has long-term monogamous gay relationships with each other. How about that shit? Did Satan get to the rams? Is that what happened? Or did... God create all that you see and just so happened to create some gay sheep. Fundamentally, his beliefs on this shit don't make any sense. And when you start poking holes, it falls apart. Everything that God made serves a purpose. I don't care how ugly it is. Let's get a little ugly. Uh-oh. Let's get a little ugly. Oh, all right. Okay. Strap in, guys. We're going to get a little ugly. Here we go. I want you to think about what the cows leave behind. It don't get no uglier than that. Remember, this guy fancies himself a comedian. He is pretty interesting. Like, his rhetorical style is pretty good if the things that he was saying weren't so 
fucking grotesque. Then he he could probably make it as a comedian to some degree. Probably a, a you know low on the list comedian, not very good. But he's a he's a good public speaker, generally speaking, when he's talking to an audience that agrees with him. When he's talking just to a general audience, it's fucking disgusting. But anyway, I digress. Let's keep listening. But you think about what can be done with what the cow leaves behind. Why is the grass in that cow pasture so green? Why is it so lush? Could it be that ugly stuff the cow left behind? See, God created that. He made that for a purpose. Everything that God made, from the foul odor of what the cow left behind, to the decaying body of every living creature, to the maggots that eat those dead bodies, to the flies that fly around what the cow left. God made all those things for a purpose. Will somebody please explain to me the purpose of homosexuality? Okay, interesting. Let me give it a shot. See if we can sit here and figure this out. Um, The purpose of homosexuality. Okay. Well, first, you're going to have to tell me what the purpose of monogamous relationships are in general. If you can explain to me what the purpose of a monogamous relationship is in the first place, then I will explain to you what the purpose of homosexuality is. It's basically one and the same. What's the point of having a guy and a girl marry? What's the point there? I can see benefits from getting married, right? You know, combine incomes, work together to support each other, so on and so forth. All those same benefits apply in a gay relationship. And as a matter of fact, gay couples can have kids. Not together yet. Science may not have gotten us there quite yet, but they are actually fully capable of reproducing. So there really isn't any special thing that's superior about straight relationships that makes gay relationships inferior. That's just complete nonsense and shows what a myopic view this guy has of the world. Let's get down to brass tacks. What is the purpose of homosexuality? What does it create? Why does it need to create anything anyways? Can't you just accept that some people want to live their lives the way they want to live it without hurting anybody. Two consenting adults doing whatever they want to do with their lives. I mean, this guy does things that the church would frown upon all the time, I'm sure. In fact, basically every single human does things that the churches would frown upon. That's the nature of being a church, making sure that nobody can live up to the standards exactly as they set them. A lot of churches want you to feel guilt in your heart for not doing the right thing, quote unquote, and they define what the right thing is. So people are going around living their lives as they want to live them, and you are trying to insert yourself in there somewhere. And I can't, for the life of me, figure out why. What the goal is. What the benefit is. What is your goal behind trying to ostracize and hate and demonize the LGBT community. What is your point there? What are you trying to get done? You know, this guy would have a lot more success in his political campaign if he brought people into the grand old tent. Isn't the grand old party supposed to include everybody? It's a big tent, right? He could easily expand his voter base by being more accepting of people who are hurting nobody. Instead of expanding his voter base, he chooses to demonize and hurt and ostracize. That's just a microcosm of the movement that we have to find a way to work around. I would like to think that these are the dying breaths of the anti-LGBT movement, but I think we still have a long road ahead. When we come back, we're going to talk about conspiracy theorists claiming God can remove the vaccine from your body if you repent. Give us 30 seconds, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com.
Next story I wanted to talk about is about a woman named Dr. Stella Emanuel. She's a, she is an interesting character to say the least. She has some real weird ideas that I wanted to address. But before we get there, I wanted to give you a little bit of lead up. So there's a guy named Tom Horn, okay? And he's got this interesting idea about the Antichrist and how the Antichrist is going to appear in society. He was on Jim Baker's show not long ago, uh, early April 2021, to present this idea about the Antichrist to Jim Baker and his audience. So let's give this a listen, see what old Mr. Tom Horn has to say about it. He's about to tell us a story that he believes is plausible, a story that could plausibly happen. A contagion during the tribulation period could sweep the world. Literally tens of millions of people are dying by the hour, and an international cry goes up around the world for some kind of cure, a vaccine. Well, a man comes forward, a single individual, who happens to be the Antichrist. And he's the only man on earth whose blood is naturally immune to this alien virus. And so a vaccine is created from his blood by which all mankind then are required to be inoculated. So it's almost like a, a black communion. Okay, so he's saying it's like a black communion. Uh, well, first of all, I don't want to poke too many holes in this because it's nonsense at its face, but I have to say that's not exactly how vaccines work. What he's probably talking about is like um, monoclonal antibodies, that treatment, that would be derived from somebody's blood who is immune to it or something like that. Uh, vaccines are basically just the virus that's been deactivated just putting the DNA into you from the virus or the RNA or whatever so that your body can learn it and build up antibodies to protect you from being infected. That's pretty much what it is. And they get to that goal in different ways. They will truncate it so that only the DNA is there. They will burn it with acid so that it's dead, but the whole thing is still there. Or they'll send certain proteins through, like in the case of mRNA vaccines. They're done in different ways. But like I said, I'm not a scientist, so I don't want to poke too many holes in this right now. But this guy's kind of being touted as like an expert, basically, when he knows absolutely nothing about how this stuff works. And it is extremely apparent that that's the case. He is an expert on nothing, really. I mean, he's not even an expert on the Bible, but that's kind of the position that he's claimed for himself. He's not an expert on science. He's really not an expert on the Bible either. He's an expert on one single conspiracy theory that he invented to get people all freaked out over it. The point that I wanted to get at with this guy, Tom Horn, is that there are some real conspiracy theories out there that are mixing religion and this whole anti-vax ideology together. It's part of their religion now. It's not just, you know, oh, science doesn't know what they're doing and we should all be afraid and wary about getting this vaccine or whatever else. It's not just that. They are working this into their theology now. And this is a perfect example of that happening. And we're about to get to a woman, Stella Emanuel, who seamlessly works it into religion. Before we watch Dr. Stella Emanuel, as you can see in this screenshot here, she's on this guy's show, Pete Santilli. Now, I wanted to introduce you to Pete Santilli real quick because he's been on my podcast before. I mean, I've talked about one of his clips before. I've never had him on. I probably wouldn't have him on as a guest. But in early August of 2021, Pete Santilli on the left here interviewed our old friend Deanna Lorraine. Let's give this a listen and see what Pete Santilli had to say. I just want to give you an idea of where this guy's headspace is, what he believes and who he is. The people now that are learning more about the adverse impact of getting vaccinated they're having mm -hmm. regrets about it because we're hearing about this shedding uh, that's yeah. going on. We? We're hearing about this? No, the shedding thing was nonsense. That is not actually possible with this vaccine, with this type of vaccine. I don't know if you guys have heard this. That they claim that once you get vaccinated, you're basically giving off the virus and getting everybody around you sick. This is bullshit. Complete bullshit. Not physiologically possible with this vaccine. 
but they don't give a shit. They don't give a shit if it's physiologically possible or not. They don't give a shit if it scientifically makes sense or not. They do not care. What they care about is spreading propaganda. That's it. Let's keep listening. It's yeah. going on and the vaccine shedding. The shedding and and also um, the 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 activation of the graphene oxide. It's actually sitting there dormant, but if it gets energized by something like five G. Okay. Okay. Wow. That's a lot. Um, well, first of all, there's no graphene oxide in the vaccines. Um, that's completely debunked. That's nonsense. And something else I wanted to point out here. Let me see if I can just pull this up real quick. Give me a second. Um, something else I wanted to point out. I don't know if you guys can see on my phone here, but I have 5G on my phone. 5G is already here. If 5G being activated is what it was going to take to activate the graphene oxide and take everybody out or whatever, we'd be dead. But that that doesn't matter. None of that matters. He made this claim, and it was in August that he made this claim. August of 2021, not that long ago. It was nonsense. It's proven unequivocally wrong, but it doesn't matter. He pretends that he never made the claim, or he pretends he was correct. Fucking nonsense. Activation of the graphene oxide. It's actually sitting there dormant, but if it gets energized by something like 5G, it actually kills all the cells around it. That is so crazy to me. I mean, can you imagine if they just like activate and said, oh, all right, a million people are going to be gone, you know? Well, I'm vaccinated. And as a matter of fact, um, most of New York City is vaccinated now. A, a, a good portion, a lot. I think it's somewhere around 70% of New York City has had at least one dose or maybe even 75%. I don't remember. I haven't looked recently, but it's a lot of people in New York City have been vaccinated. And we have 5G in New York City right now. We're not dead. I've been vaccinated for since April. The very moment I could get it, I got it. And I'm still still here, still kicking. Doesn't matter to him though. Completely irrelevant. He'll just continue pretending that he was correct about it. Just by right. energizing the graphene oxide. And that's the thing, people don't really know exactly what's in it. No, we we know exactly what's in it, actually. They, they tell us the ingredients. They don't give us the method of doing it so that it can't really be reproduced, although there are companies out there who are copying the methods. But we know what's in it. We know it's in the vaccine. That, that's not a question. That's not up for debate. We know. Just keep making shit up, though. Know exactly what's in it. You know those people, the Biden, even Trump, any of these representatives. You know they're not taking the real vaccine live on TV when they pretend that they do. How do you know that? What evidence do you have to believe that they're lying about it? Why would you even think that they were lying about it? It's complete nonsense. You know that they're not that stupid. They're not doing that. Um, they're leaving us to do that. That is Pete Santilli. I wanted to give you a little introduction to him before we get into the next clip because Pete Santilli had Dr. quote unquote doctor Stella Emanuel on. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware of who this woman is, Stella Emanuel. She got famous a while back working with the White House on some real unhinged stuff, some real weird ideas that she threw out there. For context, she made a video that went viral where she said that hydrochloroquine works and demons are responsible for this illness, and Trump endorsed the video of her saying that. She is an anti-vax doctor. I don't even know if she has the education necessary to call herself a doctor. I, I have no idea. Maybe she does. And if she does, I don't know where she got that education, if it's actually legitimate or not. But I can tell you one thing without a shadow of a doubt. Basically, anything she says about vaccines is complete nonsense. Um, doesn't add up logically or scientifically in any way. So I wanted to see what she had to say because she and Pete Santilli have been doing their absolute best to intertwine anti-vax ideology with religious ideology. And I thought it was kind of interesting to watch. So this clip came out late November 2021, so it's fairly recent. Let's give this a watch, see what it says. If you've taken this vaccine, there is a way out. If you've taken this vaccine, there is a way out, according to Stella Emanuel. It is not yet the mark. You're still taking the name and the number of his name. It's not yet the mark. She's saying it is the mark of the beast. Remember earlier the clip of Tom Horn saying all that stuff about the Antichrist? Tajian during the tribulation period could sweep the world 
Literally tens of millions of people are dying by the hour, and an international cry goes up around the world for some kind of cure, a vaccine. Well, a man comes forward, a single individual, who happens to be the Antichrist. And he's the only man on earth whose blood is naturally immune to this alien virus. And so a vaccine is created from his blood by which all mankind then are required to be inoculated. So it's almost like a, a black communion. Okay, so the black communion that this guy, Tom Horn, was so afraid of Stella Emanuel seems to believe that it's here. She seems to believe that the COVID vaccine is that black communion. She seems to believe that it is the mark of the beast, that it is part of the Antichrist, and that you're going to hell if you take it or whatever, or whatever else. That is seamlessly intertwining religion and anti-vax ideology together in a really weird, concerning way. Not only that, she says, though it is the mark of the beast, you can have it removed from your body if you repent and pray about it. If you repent and cry out to God for mercy, he will deliver you. Pete, we have cast that thing out of a lot of people. When it is Lucifer, when it is the devil, when it is Lucifer, it can be cast out in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus can always deal with it. The blood of Jesus can eliminate it, basically. That's fascinating. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I'm okay with her saying this if this means that more religious people will just get fucking vaccinated. Just get the vaccine and then pray for repentance later. How's that sound? Does that sound okay? Is that a, a, a uh, fair compromise? Recently, there were a bunch of articles came out about some people who claimed that there were some ways to expel it from your body through, I don't know, some bath of some sort. If you take a bath with certain salts or something, some spices or something like that, it will detox it from your body. Complete nonsense, but it's one of those conspiracy theories that I kind of like. You know, if people are more willing to get it because they think they can get rid of it after, uh, I'm not going to spread that because I don't believe in spreading misinformation. I think it's wrong. But, um, you know, something inside of me is going to kind of give a little cheer every time somebody gets a vaccine because they believe they can get rid of it later. Let's keep listening. Blood of Jesus can always deal with it. We had a young lady came in. We were, I was just telling them all these things about the vaccine and she got so terrified. She started crying. She was repenting. I said, repent. Ask God to have mercy on you. As we started praying for her, the vaccine started running. Whenever it was started running up and down her hand, it was running up and down, like just moving up and down, like as if the thing was like looking for some way to get out. And then the hand got really numb and we're praying for her. She started coughing. Boom, she got released and she was fine. Her whole system changed. Okay, so th this woman is saying that there were adverse, there was an adverse reaction to it and she prayed to release her and she was suddenly fine. This is like new levels of confusing and unhinged. What the fuck is going on right now? You get the strangest shit coming out of the melding of two different ideologies like this. When you get politics and religion mixing, it gives birth to just this real fucking bizarre monster. And the same with anti-vax and religion. When you mix those two, you just get the... the strangest fucking ideas coming out of this. Now I guess it's a sin and you need to be forgiven for it. You need to confess it. We've had some other lady were praying the place started vibrating when they had to shot. Boom. In the spirit she saw an L-shaped ship leave her. So these things are, we're casting this thing out of people. Mm. It is Lucifer. Once it's Lucifer, it can be cast out. So you need to pray if you've taken this vaccine Pray, ask God to have mercy on you. Kneel down and say, Father, I was deceived. I did not know. I was terrified. God will show you mercy because he knows the duress and the stress we have all been under. She's a doctor. This is a doctor, supposedly, allegedly. Oh, and, and look at this nice little thing here. Frontline doctor and demon slayer. Demon slayer. Dr. Stella Emanuel, frontline doctor and demon slayer. Do you think she requested 
this tagline on the bottom, or do you think that Pete Santilli put it on there himself? I, I would be willing to bet that she was the one that asked them to put it down. You know, when I work with organizations like American Atheists or FFRF or whatever else, they ask me for a picture and a bio, just like a little description of who I am or whatever to put on their website. And I had to write this up like forever ago, you know, just like, a uh, four or five sentence little blurb about who I am. And when someone requests it, I send it over and that's it. I'd be willing to bet that's what happened with Dr. Stella Emanuel, frontline doctor and demon slayer. I love it. Like we're living through Buffy the Vampire Slayer here or something. Anyway, there's another clip from this fine individual, Dr. Stella Emanuel. I wanted to give this one a listen. This came out late October 2021. So the one we just watched with Pete Santilli, that was late November. So that was a little bit more recent than this other one, late October 2021. So let's give this one a listen. We have human beings, they call the rulers of darkness of this world, Ephesians 6. These are people that are human beings that are liaison with the devil, but we have spiritual weakness in high places. These are the clones. Okay, so she's saying we have spiritual weakness in high places. These are clones. She's saying world leaders, basically, are clones. Ready? It gets weirder. That are not human. Some of them are governors in states. Some of them are, are presidents in different countries. Some of them are leaders of places, you know, like all these three-letter CDC. Some of them are governors, some of them are CDC leaders or FDA leaders. They're clones being inhabited by demons. WHO, you know, all this, you know, FDA, some of them are leaders in those places and their job is to make laws that will cause people to die. Their job is to make laws that'll cause people to die. Why would anybody have that job? What would the end goal be behind that? I, you know, should I try to expand on this lore anymore or does it speak for itself? To die. Yeah. And you know why? Because they are blood drinkers. Because they're blood drinkers. Oh, oh, that's why. Okay. You know, I'm sitting here wondering, should I even ask why? I was asking myself, should I ask why somebody would do that? I should have just played the extra 20 seconds. She explained it for me. They're blood drinkers. It makes perfect sense now. Such a fool. They need people to die. They need humanity to die because they need to drink blood. That is fucking strange. You know, we can sit here and laugh at this, and I do, but this kind of thing, people in places like this, high places like Stella Emanuel and Pete Santilli, and Deanna Lorraine and Tom Horn and Jim Baker and all these other people that are spreading this shit, you know what it leads to? It leads to shit like this right here. This dude is trying to convince his daughter not to get vaccinated. I, I don't want money though, like. I know you don't, but I don't know what else to do. You didn't do this to Michael and Kelsey. They already got it. You don't think I know that? Don't you think I know that? What do you think I'm fucking crazy? Your mother got it. Why do you think I'm fucking crazy? My family is gone. My family is gone. By the end of this flu season, most of you will be dead. What the fuck do you expect me to be? You know, people have talked about whether or not we should use the word delusional. And, you know, I'm sympathetic to that argument that maybe we shouldn't. I'm sympathetic to it. I think maybe we should be careful about how often we use that word because this is like a medical condition, a psychological condition that is, you know, diagnosable, that is in the DSM-5. It's on a list of symptoms for a number of illnesses and conditions and things like that. But at what point do you start calling something like this delusional? It's a medical term, but we're sitting here watching this person buy into a mass delusion, what appears to be a mass delusion. He genuinely believes that everybody who got vaccinated will be dead by the end of the flu season. Of course, this is made in 2021. We're coming up at the end of that and, and starting to enter the new year 2022 so obviously that fell flat but how many people out there bought into this and when do we start calling it a delusion thank you guys for coming and giving this a listen and i will talk to you next week
If you like what I do and you want to make sure I can continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, you can support me on Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. I sell all kinds of shirts and stickers and stuff on there. Second, you can support me by checking out my Etsy store. I sell 3D printed stands for every system from the original Nintendo to the Xbox One. And finally, if you want to support me in other ways, you can check me out on my other channels. I have the podcast channel, which is where I talk about whatever's on my mind. Politics, social issues, whatever. You can also find it everywhere podcasts can be found. Or you can check out the videos on my main channel where I focus on destructive cults. As it is with most channels these days, I rely on the support of viewers like you to keep my channel alive, so sharing my work is extremely helpful. Anyways, check me out in all those places if you haven't already. Thanks for listening, guys.